Hey, Steve from Guitar Zoom here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, what we're going to be doing is looking at the new amp from Positive Grid, the Spark amp. Now, this little guy does all kinds of different things. And so um, I thought what I would do is show you what I found out so far. Now, I've only had it for a couple of days, but I know a lot of people are asking a lot of questions about it. So I thought, let's go ahead and take a look at it. And what I'm going to be doing is a screen cast from my iPad as well. Now, you can run this with either... Uh, Apple products or Android products. I don't have any Android stuff, so I don't know how well it works, but it works just fine with the Apple stuff. So I've got the app installed on my iPad, and that's what I'll be showing you. So basically, um, if you're interested, if you head over to my Facebook page, Steve Stein Guitar, I actually did um, sort of an unboxing where I installed the app and kind of went through all the basics of that sort of thing that you could certainly check out. Um, but what we're going to do right now is I'm actually going to start talking about some of the most important things and how like the jamming works and all that sort of thing. So basically what you do is when you take it out and you install the app, this is going to connect to your device and it really connects via Bluetooth twice. It does it once to connect the actual product to the app and then it actually um, installed via Bluetooth an audio connection as well. So basically whatever it is I want to play on my iPad, whether I'm watching a movie or listening to Spotify or, you know, on YouTube or whatever it might be, um, it will play through the Spark amp. So let me show you here. I'm going to pull up Spotify. It's just regular old Spotify. I'm not using the Spark app. I'm just using Spotify. If I start playing it, So you can play audio through the Spark app, so it, or Spark amp, excuse me. So it's really nice because when I'm sitting around the house, if I just want to listen to music, I can just start playing and it, it sounds great. Now this is 40 watts, as I understand it, it's 40 watts, and it's more than loud enough for any practice elements. Now we'll get into practice versus performance and what you'd actually use it for and that sort of thing as well. But, you know, just again, just for jamming some music, that's kind of top level that, that this thing could do. Now, the second thing I'm going to do here, if uh, everything works out okay, is I'm going to start the Spark app now. And what I do is I go over and connect hardware, hit search, and hopefully it will find it here. Okay, so what I figured out <laughs> is that I can't do a screen recording on my iPad and then try and connect. So I connected first. And now I'm going to uh, start recording my screen here. And then I can show you what's going on. So, so now what, what I'm going to do is, is, of course, I can change the, uh, the volume and all that sort of thing with the buttons here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change those with the app now so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to the clean sound. Let me turn that down just a little bit. Try the crunch channel. Now, for the demo that I did, I actually used a bunch of these different sounds, and we'll talk about that too. So these are the sounds that come with just the four channels. When you just turn it on, if you didn't have it connected to the app, these would be the four channels you'd hear. But what's cool now is if I go over to all, you're going to see all the, the sounds that came stock with this, okay? And then you can break them down into styles like pop sounds, blues sounds, rock sounds, metal sounds, that sort of thing. Um, but the other thing I want to show you, and again, I could click on any of these and just kind of... Right? So there's all kinds of really great sounds in here. But the other thing is, is that if you come up here to the tone cloud, then you can connect out here to what everybody else has uploaded. And I've already downloaded some of these sounds. So you can go in here and see if you like a particular sound. Let's say I like this Gilmore sound here. <laughs> Let's try this orange solo. Let's 
fancy and just kind of look around for something that you might like, Hendrix. Classic Marshall. So let's say I like that one. Okay, so what I can do is click that little download thing there, and then it says Classic Marshall, and it tells me where it's going to download it. Now I can, I can change the uh, folder that it goes in, right? But I'm not going to do that. So if I want to download this, I'm just going to click on that, hit that, and it now is downloaded. And I now have that sound on my uh, iPad that I can use anytime I want. Okay? So again, top level, we're just using it as a speaker for whatever it is we want to listen to, right, from our device, our tablet or our, you know, phone or whatever it is that we want. The second level now is I'm just dialing in some tones that I like to practice with. So again, just kind of messing around here. I don't want to waste too much time with this stuff because uh, I'm sure you have other things to do. But uh, we'll just kind of mess around. I'll go... So there's an Eric Johnson clean sound. Make sure I'm not overdriving the signal there. Okay, so now let's say I like that sound, and that's what I want to use. So now what we can do is we can move over. You see, there's my, my folder right there, and of course, while I'm looking at this Eric Johnson sound, I might decide I want a different amp. So I can double-click on that, and I can choose a different amp, right? So maybe I'll go to, um, this is the matchless, I believe, right? Yeah, there it is. So let's say I go to something else like the Tweed Bass. <laughs> Right? I'd rather go back to this one anyway. So if I'm overdriving it a little bit, all these are different volumes with what I'm doing. And I'm just to let you know too, I'm actually running headphone out right now into my audio interface. And the reason I had to do it that way, instead of using the USB, which this does have USB on it, and you can plug it directly into your computer, and you can do direct recording and all that sort of thing, but I'm also using a microphone. So instead of using the USB out of this um, and then having conflict with different audio devices, I'm just using the headphone out, running it into my audio interface, and then I can still use my microphone and everything like that. So there's my sound, right? So you could go through and let's say you wanted to change the, the reverb, you could change out the reverb on here, okay? Or let's say you like this reverb, but you want a little more reverb, right? Or you want it a little bit longer. It's that easy to adjust, okay? If I go here, I could switch it to natural hall, for instance, and then, or hall natural, and then I might, you know, readjust it a little bit from there. Um, but for now, hold on. Okay, we'll just leave it as it is, okay? So I'm gonna go back out. So this is fine, this is a perfect sound. Okay, so now I move over to this little icon down here, and what happens is you're gonna see there's all these different sounds or all these different jam tracks that are curated from YouTube that Positive Grid has went out and found for you. So let's say I click on, uh, let's say we're gonna do a ballad, right? So I, I click on this one, okay? And then this pops up. Now you can see it's all ready to go. Okay. I can turn that up a little bit if I need to. And you can see right on the screen there that the chords are written out, all that sort of thing. They've already curated all that information for you to jam along with. Now you could obviously not use this app and you could jam along with anything, right? You can go out on YouTube and or directly or Spotify or whatever it is that you like. But within the app itself, when they've curated these, you can see that you actually see the chords and all that thing, the chord charts, everything's mapped out for you. So you can check those out. Uh, let's say we did, here's a blues one. I'm, I'm not gonna change my tones for now just to save some time here. So you can 
jam along that way. Now the next thing we're going to do here is, uh, and there's all kinds of different stuff in here for you to look at, okay? But let's say we're going to do this, okay? I'm going to move over to this right over here. Got hardware settings, recently played, like songs. I, you can see I've got Apple Music and Spotify, okay? Now, I have those. I have subscriptions to both of those. So, and I don't know if there's any other subscriptions that they have, or maybe they'll have some other ones down the line or something if you use something else. But if I click on Spotify, what you'll notice is what pops up are all of my um, playlists. Same thing if I, and then look here. Now I'm back here. It's showing some of my playlists that I've used prior because I was jamming with some other bands and things like that. And these are some of the songs we were working on. So it's got some of the stuff that I've done before recently played sitting right here. And then if I go back to Apple Music, for instance, and click on Apple Music, now it does the same thing. It shows all of my playlists. So I can go in and play something specific from one of my playlists. Now when I go in and start playing, what's kind of interesting is it starts analyzing the songs. Now you're going to see here, like, um, play that funky music. Okay? It's connected to... It must be connected. Obviously, it's connected to YouTube. And it's curated the the chords. Again, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's it's figured out what the chords are for the song. Let's go back to something else. Let's go back to this one see what happens okay now check this out so there's no chords listed it's almost done That yellow bar shows it's analyzing the song. Here's to the babies in a brand new world. Here's to the beauty of the stars. Here's to the traveling on the open road. Here's to the okay, not that we want to listen to the song for five minutes because it'll probably wind up getting blocked on YouTube anyway. But what'll happen is that yellow bar will fill up and then all of a sudden you'll see all the chords and everything like that. Now, I don't know that it would work really well with something really, really heavy or something, you know, really fast or whatever. I, I don't know. I just, I was pretty impressed by how quickly it figures out the song and then lays out the uh, the chords and everything. But again, I'm not going to sit and play that song for three minutes and uh, wind up having the video blocked or this video blocked anyway. So anyway, those are things that you can do. You can pull in music from one of your uh, playlists, either from Apple Music or from Spotify within the app itself. You can use the curated uh, jam tracks and then all the chords and stuff are written out, that sort of thing. And remember, you can step outside this app and you can do whatever you want and it'll play through here along with your guitar, right? And then there is a button up on top where you can adjust the volume of the jam track or whatever's playing through that, that Spark amp, right? So you can adjust your guitar volume and then you can just adjust the, uh, the jam track or whatever you want. So that's a really easy way of adjusting both of them to what you want. Okay, and then let's go ahead and there's a metronome in here. You simply turn it to speed it up or slow it down. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go back out here. Now, Smart Jam, you see that up on the top there? It says Smart Jam. Okay, now here what happens, let's say we wanted to play something uh, blues, right? So we go to blues. Okay, so right there what we can see is we can change the styles or grooves of the different blues tracks that we want. So these really are just jam tracks is what they are, okay? And then what you can do is you can come over here and you can change the tempo of it. So let's say you really like this one. But you want it slower. Now, I don't, again, I'm new to this too. I don't see where you can change the key of this particular backing track or this quick jam, it's called. 
Maybe you can. I, I haven't found it yet. And again, I'm not going to waste your time with it, but um, maybe there is a way. But I do want to show you this. This is one of the coolest things about this when I tried it at NAMM. Okay, if I hit create in the corner here, there's going to be different drummers here, but they're not here yet. But what you can do is you can choose a drummer and then basically what it's going to do is it's going to create a groove out of the chords that I play on my guitar and the tempo that I play it at. So let's say I'm going to play something here. Again, make sure my signal isn't way too loud for you over there so it distorts, which I apologize if it does. I've got a lot of things going on here. So, so I'm going to tap out something and I'm going to start playing, okay? So let's say it's there. Okay, and let's see what happens now. jam track around what I'm doing and I know again normally it would hear me a little bit better because right now I, I don't even have the speaker on because I'm running headphone out into uh, some monitors up there but basically that's what it's trying to do is it's trying to hear what it is I'm doing and then replicate that by building a little uh, backing track we're going to try it again here let's bump this up a little bit Let's try this again. So I'm going to try something else. see how that works. Yep, so G, D, A. Right? And so there's a whole host of different things. And again, I'm trying to figure it all out as well, but I just want you to see some of the amazing things that you can do with this amp. So again, it sounds really good. And, and I hope eventually you'll get a chance to try one out and, and see for yourself. Cause I've had a lot of people ask, does it get loud? Yes, it does. It still sounds really, really good. Even when it does get loud, although I haven't just had this thing cranked, I've just had it at normal levels and it works really well. Now I just had a couple of different gigs with different bands and I was using this all weekend to practice even when I was traveling. Um, and it works really great it, for me at the, e even at the lowest level of just being able to play the tracks through here and then dial in a tone that kind of matches the track that I'm trying to play along with. And then rehearse is really great. Um, but of course you can build jam tracks and all that sort of thing on your own as well. So hopefully that kind of covers everything. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really need to talk about. The only output on here is the headphone out. Um, again, maybe that will change someday in the future. It does not have a foot controller or something. I know I've had some people that asked me, you know, if you were playing it live, for instance, which I don't know that I would play it live. It's more of a practice amp for me, but you know, maybe it's something you could do, but there is no foot controller, so you can't be switching between clean and dirty or something like that with your feet. You have to physically do it either by turning the knob on here or by uh, having the app and switching the, the thing. So from that perspective, it doesn't really seem very practical for trying to use it live, but who knows? It depends. Maybe you only need a couple of different sounds and, and it would be fine for that. Of course, you could throw a microphone in front of that. 
or you could run the headphone out like I'm doing right now. You would just want to balance out your tones, right? Because right now I'm just finding some different sounds from the tone cloud, downloading them. Some are louder and some are quieter than others. If I was actually trying to kind of sort of streamline everything, I'd want to balance out all of those volumes so they're very similar. Um, so I think that kind of covers everything. If you have any other questions, please uh, comment below the video and I'll do my best, uh, the best that I can to, to come back and make sure that I check that and see if I can answer any of your questions. I don't know anything about the sh you know when estimated shipping or arrival and all that sort of thing. I'm just trying to show you kind of what it is because I know a lot of people are excited about this. And if you know anything about the kind of stuff that I use, I've always been a fan of positive grid tones. I'm a big fan of the bias amp sounds. And this really is like a bias amp tone with the effects that come from bias effects. So it's kind of a combination of both of those in my eyes anyway. Um, and again, the great thing is, is with the Tone Cloud, you can either store your own sounds or share them with other people, or you can download other sounds to kind of dial in the best sounds that you want. So anyway, take care. Hopefully that helps you a little bit in understanding how the Spark Amp works from Positive Grid. And like I said, if you have any questions or anything like that, don't hesitate to comment and I will do the best I can to come back and, and uh, check your, your questions and answer some of them as best I can as I'm learning myself. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon.